Remember, in using the reduction of order method, when you have a differential equation of second order of the form a sub 2x times the second derivative of y plus a sub 1x y prime plus a sub 0x y equal to g of x. And whenever you have one of the solutions like y sub 1, you can find the second solution using y1 times the integral of e to power negative integral pt dt divided by y1 squared t dt. And that's how you find the second solution. We're going to use this and basically find the solution for a second order differential equation when it has constant coefficients. So in the topic of auxiliary equation, we begin by considering a special case of second order equation a times the second derivative of y plus by prime plus cy equal to zero. A, B, C are numbers or constants. They are not functions in X or T. If we try to find a solution of the form exponential function Y equals to E to power MX, then the first derivative of this possible solution is M E to power MX, and the second derivative is M squared E to power MX. We're going to substitute this into the differential equation. We get A M squared E to power MX, plus bm e to power mx plus c e to power mx equal to zero. Factor out e to power mx, you end up with a m squared plus bm plus c, and on the right-hand side of the equation, it is equal to zero. But please note that e to power mx is never zero. So what you can do, you can take this quadratic equation and set it equal to zero. So, so far we saw that if we have a second order differential equation with constant coefficients like a, the second derivative of y plus by prime plus cy equal to zero, one of the possible solutions is y e to power mx. We saw that the first derivative is m e to power mx and the second derivative is m squared e to power mx. By substituting that into the second order differential equation, you can basically construct something that we call auxiliary equation. For this auxiliary equation, a m squared plus b m plus c equal to zero, this is what's happening. We're going back to algebra. e to power mx times a m squared plus b m plus c is equal to zero. And remember that since e to power m x is not zero, we have this auxiliary equation or quadratic equation. The two roots are m1, which is negative one, plus square root of b squared minus four ac divided by two a, and m2, which is negative b minus square root of b squared minus four ac divided by two a. And we have three different scenarios here. The very first case is m1 and m2 are real numbers and they are different from each other. This happens when the discriminant is positive. It means that the graph hit x-axis at two points. The second case is m1 and m2 are real numbers, but they are equal to each other. This is the case that discriminant or b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero. And finally, the last case is m1 and m2 are complex numbers and they are conjugate of each other. The case that b squared minus 4ac is negative. Well, each case result in solutions that form the general solution of a differential equation. So let us just summarize what we learned so far. In the first case, when you have these distinct real solutions, under the assumption that the auxiliary equation has two unequal real solutions m1 and m2, you can find the two solutions as e to power m1x and e to power m2x. These two functions are independent from each other and they form a fundamental set. So you can write the general solution for this differential equation as c1 e to m1x plus c2 m2x. 
the second case the second scenario is when m1 and m2 are equal to each other they are real in this case you say that we have a repeated real solution y1 is e to power m1x and then we can use the method of e to power m1x times the integral of e to power 2m1x divided by e to power 2m1x dx. And please note that you can cancel out these two terms. You get e to power m1x, the integral of dx, which is x, e to power m1x. So you found the second solution. By the method of reduction of order, you can find the second solution. So in this case, when you have repeated real roots, the general solution is y equals to c1 e to the power m1x plus c2 e to the power m1x. And finally, the last case when you have complex roots and they're conjugate of each other. If m1 and m2 are complex, then we can write m1 as alpha plus i beta and m2 as alpha minus i beta. Alpha and beta are real numbers, and as you remember, i squared is equal to negative 1. In that case, this is basically similar to case 1 with distinct root. The solution can be written as c1 e to the power alpha plus i beta x plus c2 e to the power alpha minus i beta x. We're going to simplify this as y equals to c1 e to the alpha x cosine beta x plus c2 e to power alpha x sine beta x, or in simpler form, e to power alpha x parentheses c1 cosine beta x plus c2 beta sine beta x. So as you can see, we divide this into three different scenarios or three different cases. Again, this only works when you have a differential equation of constant coefficients that you can use this possible solution and form auxiliary equation and solve it. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Solve to the second derivative of y minus 5y prime minus 3y equal to 0. First of all, you have constant coefficients. It is similar to this guy. So one possible solution is y equals to e to power mx then you need to form the auxiliary equation or quadratic equation to solve. The auxiliary equation corresponding to the differential equation is 2m squared minus 5m minus 3, which can be written as 2m plus 1 times m minus 3 by factoring. Setting it equal to 0, you get two distinct solutions. m1 is negative a half and m2 is 3. So as you can see, this is the first case, first scenario. You have M1, you have M2, just plug them into the formula. The second case, the second scenario is when you have repeated real roots. Let's take a look at example B, the second derivative of Y, minus 10Y prime plus 25Y is zero. The auxiliary equation corresponding to its differential equation is m squared minus 10m plus 25, which is m minus 5 to the second power equal to 0. Well, m1 and m2 are the same. You have a repeated solution, so this is case 2. In that case, the general solution can be written as c1 e to the power 5x plus c2x e to the power 5x. And case three, when you have conjugate solution. Take a look at this example, the second derivative of y plus 4y prime plus 7y is zero. The corresponding auxiliary equation is m squared plus 4m plus 7 equal to zero. So m1, which is negative 2, plus square root of 3i, and m2 is negative 2 minus square root of 3i. Your alpha is negative 2 and your beta is square root of 3. Just plug them into the formula, and the general solution is y equals to e to the power negative 2x, c1, cosine square root of 3x, plus c2, sine square root 3x.